Gab. Welcome back to the Greenwood Gab podcast, the official podcast of Greenwood Library. I'm Natalie Browning. And I'm Sarah Reynolds. And today we are going to take a look, or not a look because you're listening to this, not watching it, at all the, well, not all of them, I'm qualifying this a lot, at some of the new things that are going on here at Greenwood Library. Yes, yeah, so we've got some exciting interviews. We know you like listening to us. Like, this is why you tune in for the two of us for our banter. Exactly. But, uh, we did invite some of our colleagues on to talk about new furniture, new website, new digitization of resources. So we've got some some fun things lined up today. Yeah, and one of uh, the most fun things in my book that we have going on that's brand new here at the library is that we have a solar bench. It's outside between the library and Brock Hall, and you can charge your phone both wirelessly as well as with USB or USB-C adapters. And it's also a Bluetooth speaker, which is kind of exciting. You can jam out to all your favorites while you're sitting out on the bench charging your phone. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's kind of in between the library and Brock Hall. Did you say that? I did, but that's okay. It's good to <laughs> two times. If you hear something once, you might forget it. You hear it a second time, it'll stick. Yeah, we're, we're really trying to paint pictures for you here since this is just a, an audio medium. Exactly. <laughs> and also, I wasn't paying attention when Sarah was talking. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Natalie. <laughs> and speaking of Bluetooth speakers and jamming out to your favorite songs, I heard a fun music trivia fact last night, which we mentioned in a previous podcast, how much we both like trivia, especially of the musical variety. Here we go. If anyone knows about this already, sorry, boring, <laughs> repeating. But well, I want to learn. So. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar's album, To Pimp a Butterfly, was actually originally supposed to be called To Pimp a Caterpillar, which was a mnemonic device to spell out Tupac. So the two gets put into the number two and then pimp a caterpillar, P-A-C, so Tupac, because he uh, used that album to kind of be in conversation with Tupac, this person who died very young and reflect back on that. So I thought that was kind of an interesting idea, that to pimp a caterpillar, Tupac. Nice. I'm sure this wasn't your intention at all, but that's actually kind of a good segue into one of our conversations with the dean of the library, because if you don't know, he loves an acronym. It's true. And he's going to mention one of them in his interview, so I won't spoil it, but library loves acronyms. So very appropriate music trivia fact. <laughs> All right, so over the next few minutes, uh, you're going to hear us talking with a variety of people, and uh, we thank you for tuning in yet again. We're now joined by Dr. Brent Roberts, Dean of Longwood's Library, <laughs> and we're going to talk with him a little bit about some of the new facilities. When you come into the library, you'll see our spaces have changed and have been changing over the last couple of years. But first, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Dr. Roberts, is that correct? Uh, I'm only Dr. Roberts to students in the classroom. So you can just call me Brent, Sarah. Thanks. <laughs> tell us more about yourself, Brent. Oh, what would you like to know? How long have you been at Longwood? Oh, I have been at Longwood for six, about to go into my seventh year. Seven of the most wonderful and amazing years of my life. What kind of things do you do as dean for Longwood University Library? Oh, wow. I do a lot of things, Natalie, and it is my pleasure to serve at this great institution. <laughs> as dean, uh, basically, I oversee everything that goes on in the library, but uh, my vision is just to empower the librarians and all library staff to do what they want to do, to use their creative juices and do crazy wild things like have a podcast <laughs> and then just get out of their way while they go be creative. Mm, sounds great. So if you're willing, will you share a fun fact with us? A fun fact? Mm -hmm. About me? Yes. About me personally? Sure. That's usually how they work. <laughs> yes. Gosh. <laughs> Uh, so many, so many things to choose from. My go-to is that I've climbed Mount Fuji. 
I don't know that everybody knows that. I lived in Japan for three years, and uh, as part of that, I climbed to the top of Japan's highest peak. Awesome. It was a poorly yeah. planned trip. <laughs> it, was a, it was a rainy day in August. But you made it. Yeah, I did make it to the top, and I uh, got to experience Goraiko, which, of course, is the honorific sunrise that occurs on Mount Fuji. That's kind of the, the thing that you're supposed to do. You climb Mount Fuji, and you're there for the sunrise. And we barely made it. It was a very, very poorly planned trip where we didn't have reservations at any of the trailside huts or cabins. And so basically we were just lucky to find a bed for the night in a, just a terrible downpour. But then the next morning we climbed up above the clouds, got up very early before the sunrise, and then we were able to be there <laughs> while the sun rose before us. We won't even need any uh, sound effects for this section oh, yeah. of the podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and there's really no good segue into this conversation we want to have. Was it also a rainy day in August when you decided to replan the layout of the Learning Commons in the library? Oh, wow. It was probably not uh, a rainy day in August. It might have been. But we have, for the last four years, been working on a multi-stage, multi-phase, multi-year plan to renovate and upgrade to freshen up all of the furniture in the learning commons which is this big space just as you come into the front of the majestic <laughs> janet d greenwood library just to the that kind of big room to the left that you go into where the computer lab is and uh, lots of furniture that is the learning commons and when i got here six plus years ago it was i mean it, it was good furniture but it had seen a lot of action, a <laughs> lot of action. I mean, a lot of people come through these doors. Mm -hmm. The library. And we love that. We want people to come through. Absolutely. Doors. Yeah. We want to use it. And I mean, originally, uh, according to my conversations with the library's namesake, Dr. Janet D. Greenwood, former president of Longwood University, one of the core uh, ideas behind the library being placed here, previously it was in the space where Eason Hall is now, but being, placing it here, put it right in the heart, the center, the core of campus. And that is really what the library is, is meant to do. So we love to have people just coursing in great hordes through the library. And where was I? Oh, the, <laughs> that the furniture was well used. It had gotten a lot, of, a lot of love over the years. So we thought, you know, let's start to, to redo some of the furniture as kind of the start of that. Right. And I know one of our goals was to increase sight lines across the room. We had some different levels of furniture that was taller, made it harder to see in the room. So I know that was one of the main goals of the redesign. What were some other things that we were trying to accomplish? Well, Sarah, as you know, one of our key priorities, in fact, our number one priority is responsiveness. And we try to be responsive to student and faculty and community member needs whenever we can. And one of the things we decided to do was rather than us as librarians just deciding what everyone would find to be comfortable furnishings, we decided to get a variety and create a sandbox where people could test out different types of furniture. And then we would observe their usage and gather feedback. And then that would guide our decisions moving on as we purchased furniture for the whole area. So that's what we did in 2018. We started this process. There is a space up against the, it's the northeast corner of the library. It's the part that looks right over into Brock Hall. And it's right against those big, beautiful windows. We wanted to use those beautiful windows so that people can sit there and just bask in the sunlight and inhale the, the beautiful library air and not through open windows though not through open windows <laughs> of course but we wanted to be over there by the windows and so we got we got tall chairs we got couches we we got various types of booths and we even got a couple of rocking chairs to go over in that space so we got a variety of things so that people could try those out and we could find out what worked best and so, like you mentioned, we've been working on this since 2018, but our most recent part of the renovation happened just this summer. 
actually just last week where we've now moved printing to the center of the room. You want to talk a little bit about why we created that centralized printing area? That was for student convenience right there. Uh, and we wanted it to be sure so that we wanted to be sure that students have access to all of those services printing and be able to put additional money on their Lancer card if need be. They can do that right there as well. And that's also one of the reasons why we wanted the sight lines to be this open concept in the learning commons so that when our library staff are working at the service desk, they can look directly over and see what's going on out here and jump into action if any help is needed. Is there anything else coming up in the library that you'd like to share with our listeners? Oh, there are so many things, Sarah. Uh, and hopefully we might have a chance to talk about some of these things on future editions of Greenwood Gap. Oh, sorry. Electric guitar isn't part of it, is it? No, it's, it's a noodling clarinet. Oh, that's right. Which is my, my main instrument is clarinet, as you know. I am a musician. Yes, and we are hoping to get you to actually noodle and not just have our little MIDI file clarinet. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Well, we have lots of things coming up. Uh, one of the big things that I'm very excited about that will change the library landscape of Southside, Virginia forever is the creation of a new library consortium. And a consortium is just a group. And we are partnering with our friends at Hampton Sydney College's William Bortz Library and our friends at the Central Virginia Regional Library. And we're going to share an online catalog. And that is going to be super exciting because, I mean, it'll be great for students and faculty at Longwood and it'll be great for our community. It'll be great for the whole region because people, depending on whichever is their primary library, they can request books from any of the other libraries and have it delivered. We'll have a courier system going back and forth between the libraries. So it's it's really going to be amazing. So stay tuned for that. And what is the name of that consortium? Oh, that's a great question, Natalie. I'm so <laughs> glad you asked. It is called, the acronym is SALSA, Southside Area Libraries Sharing Access. Because that's our, our highest goal is to share access to information for people across Southside to make our communities better and to help people improve their lives. Well, thank you, Brent, <laughs> Dr. Roberts, uh, for joining us for this episode of Greenwood Gap. And we hope to have you back many times to talk more about all the great things Greenwood Library is doing. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> all right. Now we're here with Jamie Crow, our archives and records specialist. And she's going to talk to us a little bit about a new wish project involving the Farmville Herald and the Library of Virginia. But first, Jamie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Jamie Crow. I'm the Archives and Records Specialist, as you already said. I've um, been at Longwood for four years now, and before that I was a student here. graduated in 2007. This is also kind of my fun fact about myself. <laughs> and I actually worked here in the Greenwood Library as a student assistant, and I worked with the former Archives and Records Specialist. So I've kind of come full circle from student to employee. <laughs> Took a few years, but we got here eventually. <laughs> there you go. And now just working on preserving the collections, the special collections of Longwood University. So well, that gives me the idea of another podcast episode. We can like contact our old student <laughs> assistants, see what they're up to now. Yeah, that sounds we'll fun. We'll start with you. <laughs> And I definitely see opportunities for more archives yeah. episodes. So we only kind of have time today to talk about the one project, yeah. but Special Collections does literally so much. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I really enjoy Special Collections and archives. So um, I'm always happy to be a little bit nerdy about it and get excited about it and tell people about all the cool things we have in our collection. So that's always fun for me, too. We like to get nerdy, so you're definitely in the right place. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We're all nerds here. <laughs> so why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about what the Farmville Herald is and why it's here? Yeah, so the Farmville Herald is the newspaper for the for Farmville and Prince Edward County. It was 
it's gone through several name changes, but um, began kind of as the Farmville Mercury, I think, in the 1800s, and then eventually merged around with the Farmville Leader and the Farmville Herald, but it's been essentially in publication since 18, the 1890s. So this is a really important historical resource for our community, um, documenting news and events that have happened here. So it's a really valuable resource for people if they're doing genealogy research, local history research, even like national research on national events, kind of taking it from a perspective of how the local people felt about a national event, you get some really interesting perspectives. So yeah, Farmville has a lot of like national history happening right here, especially during the civil rights movement, which I'm sure there's lots of great stuff about that. Yeah, we actually had students last semester working on doing an indexing project to index articles related to school segregation and in the Farmville Herald. And I think there's over like 3000 entries just in that index alone. Wow. Yeah, (laughs) it's a lot. Yeah. So Sarah referred to this as a new-ish <laughs> project. I do know we had the Herald on microfilm for a long time, but how have we gone about this new digitization project? Yeah, so Brent Roberts, our dean, actually worked with the Library of Virginia. He learned about a program from the Library of Virginia to digitize local newspapers. And so he got in contact with them and then kind of made contacts with the Farmville Herald themselves and kind of got everybody in the same room together and and basically asked for permission from the Farmville Herald to allow the Library of Virginia to digitize the the Herald. So they actually digitize the microfilm reels. That's how they make the digital copies. And essentially, the Farmville Herald said yes, and LVA went ahead and started working on that project. It's been about a two-year process. So they finished uploading up to 2010, I believe, in December of 2021. Now there's still some more years to go. We're hoping to get 2010 to at least 2017 up online, but we're all in negotiations about that at the moment. (laughs) And where can people find the digitized Farmville Herald online? Yeah, so they're available on the Library of Virginia's website, and it's virginiachronicle.com. Also part of the project involved the, the Greenwood Library acquiring the hard bound print editions of the Farmville Herald. So we moved those physically here to the library in 2020. So we have, it's not a complete run, but a fairly decent run from about 1902 to I think 2018 or, or 2019 print editions of, of the Herald that we, we typically use those for exhibits and displays, but there are also sometimes it's nice to go through the, the tactilely rather than on the microfilm, but the big advantage of having it online is that you can keyword search, which saves everyone a ton of time and yes. <laughs> lots of energy. So, well, I think we'll kind of end with asking if there's anything else you would like to add about either the Herald or special collections and archives. But first, if people have their own questions about special collections, how can they contact you? So, you can send me an email at K-R-O-G-H-J-L at Longwood.edu, and I'm happy to answer questions about archives and special collections or, you know, Longwood history in general. Any help with those kind of things, I'm happy to talk about them. Or you can call me, um, too. My phone number is 434-395-2432. And like I said, I'm I'm a nerd about those things, so I like to talk about them. I love, I love when people have questions. I love it even more when we actually have the answer, and I can help you find it and and get it to you. So I'm always happy to help. And you can find Jamie's contact information on the library's website, which is just library.longwood.edu. And you can find all of our contact information under the About tab, Contact Us. Any last thoughts, Jamie? No, I think that covers everything. (laughs) Well, thank you for joining us on this episode of Greenwood Gap. Thank you for having me. This has been fun. (laughs) So now we're here with two of our digital resources colleagues to talk about our new website design. So I'll let them introduce themselves. So Mark, why don't we start with you? What is your job title here at Longwood? How long have you been here? I'm Mark Hamilton. I'm the Research and Digital Services Librarian. I've been here since winter of 2018. 
I have a master's in library science from Pennsylvania Western University at Clarion. One of the things I like to do besides working here in the library is I like to go hiking. Any favorite trails? Um, I've been to some parks around here. I mean, I've done hiking in the Southwest and in New England and some other parts of the country. And our other colleague, Hope. Hey, I'm Hope. Uh, I'm the Digital Initiative Specialist here at Greenwood. I've been here since July 2018. I got my Master's in Library and Information Studies from UNCG in 2018. And a fun fact about me is I like to do wood burning, also known as pyography. Wow. Hiking and wood burning. Now I feel like we should just go up into the Appalachians now. <laughs> we should uh, challenge our listeners to do everything that the people said they like to do that we have as guests. So if you ever, if you start woodworking, let Hope know. Uh, we'll give you her contact information at the end. So I guess we'll start kind of with why the website redesign and how did we go about redesigning the website? Sure, I can. I can answer that. Shortly after I got here, I started evaluating our website and noticed that it had been several years since it had had a refresh. And it seemed like there were parts of it that might not be as user friendly. And so I convened a website committee with Hope and one of our other librarians, Tammy Hines, uh, to begin the process of thinking about what redesigning it would look like. And we began to put a plan together. That was in fall of 2019. And in the fall of 2019, we started mapping out what usability studies we wanted to do. We ended up doing a survey, a virtual card sort, a virtual tree test, and one usability study that took about 2.5 years for everything to get done. Um, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did get feedback from all the stages of the usability studies, and we also did a lot of research into other college libraries, how their websites looked, and also what our options were coding-wise, which was more of my area. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the tests you mentioned, if people aren't familiar with like what a tree test is or what those kind of look like. Okay, uh, so the virtual card sort was we gave our participants, I think it was 30, 30 components of our website. So we like one of the cards would have the catalog, our database, A to Z list, uh, research guides, stuff like that. And then we asked them to put them in. We gave them five different categories, but we also gave them the option to write their own categories. That was step one, and then the free test was we evaluated the card sort results and we determined the menu heading names, so find and borrow services and support, research help, and about Greenwood Library, and we would give the people a task and ask them to only use the menu headings and the sub-menu headings to complete the task. That was to ensure that we were on the right track and that it was going to make sense to our users. And our last test that we did this past spring, the usability test, was we gave people five tasks and we asked them to go through the new website and kind of talk through the process of why they were going this route and also to give us feedback for each of the tests to make sure that our website was usable and efficient. And we originally designed all of these tasks to be in person. For example, the card sort was going to be physical cards that would be set out on a table and you would move them to whatever categories you wanted to. All of the three usability tests moved virtually virtual because of COVID and a, a need to social distance and and still be able to do the tests in a timely manner. Now COVID made everything so much more fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So for our listeners who might be familiar with our old website, what are some of the key maybe differences, things that we made better about our new website? First major change was we changed the color scheme so that it matches other Longwood, Longwood sites. That was some of the feedback that we got. Our homepage looks very different. Uh, we updated the new search box so that it has three tabs. You can search pretty much everything in the first tab. The second one is books and DVDs. The third tab is digital commons. Uh, we also got a new web banner that is not so oblong. <laughs> <laughs> one of the results of our, our testing was um, we changed some of our menu names 
so that it would be easier for people to understand what they're looking for. In the footer of the website, we, we updated it with contact information and just made it a little easier to use. And our new website is more mobile friendly than our old website was. So you should not have to be redirected to another website. You will now just have our website. Definitely important today when a lot of people are searching on their phones. Yes. (laughs) So since this is a new kind of platform, if people have questions or feedback, how should they submit that? So one thing that's going to go live um, by the time classes start on August 22nd is we're going to have the feedback form that slides out on the left-hand side. So if people want to give us some feedback and if they have any questions, we'll have our email addresses on there. And also on the new website, there's the About tab and under that is Contact Us and you can find Mark and Hope's contact information there as well. And I think we probably should point out our web address is library.longwood.edu if you are unfamiliar. Um, You can also find us linked off of Longwood's website. Yeah, we're excited for everyone, students, faculty, staff, community to use our new website. Is there anything else you want to add about the website that we haven't talked about yet? Just one thing on our homepage linked on the bottom, there is a new at Greenwood. So as we post new social media posts, new digital displays that we that we do, new books, new DVDs, all of that lives on the new at Greenwood page and you can access that from our homepage. Another big thing too that has changed is how our chat is going to pop out. So instead of it being on that tab that you're in and you can't, you know, work with the website, it now pops out as its own window. So you'll be able to talk to the person and work within the website. (laughs) It's a little button that you click and then you can open it. Yeah, I think sometimes people accidentally like would navigate away from chat as they were searching along with us. So that's a good change. (laughs) Well, thank you all so much for sharing a little bit about the new website. And as things change or if there's any new digital projects that you all want to share with us, we hope to have you back. Thank Thank you. Okay, so you're back with just Sarah and I. How Um, boring! (laughs) But even though you're going to be bored for these next few minutes, we hope you enjoyed our conversations with Brent and Jamie and Mark and Hope. So hopefully you got some insight into some of the things we're doing. And if you ever have any questions about what's going on at the library, you want to know more about what our new things are, new things happening at Greenwood. You can also check out our social media. What's that, uh, Natalie? So we are Greenwood Library on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And we are at Greenwood Lib LU on Twitter. Follow us for all the updates. Yes. And we're going to try to use all the platforms in various ways. So feel free if you're on all of those platforms to follow us every place because We are going to be sharing some different kinds of information depending on the platform to cater to the people using that platform. So if you're on Twitter and Facebook, don't worry. We're not going to spam you with a bunch of the same posts over and over again. We're going to try to branch out and talk about some different things depending on where you're seeing the information. Yes. So thank you again for making it to the end of another podcast episode. Hopefully you enjoyed this different format. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Have a great rest of your week whenever we upload this or whenever you listen to this. Who knows what day that will be, but just just have a great. Have a great. <laughs>